Gender equality is often treated as a diversity issue, but law firm Simmons and Simmons has discovered they make greater strides by approaching gender balance as a core business issue driven by a powerful gender network. Here's more from their London office. <laughs> I definitely remember when I started, the expectation was that I would probably get to about sort of four or five years qualified and then probably disappear. Emma didn't disappear. She's a partner at international law firm Simmons & Simmons. She's also co-chair of the firm's gender network, bringing together women and men from their 21 offices internationally. I think one of the things that's really helped is looking at the gender balance in both ways. So helping women return to the workplace, have really good maternity policies in place, really good contact points for them when they are away, really good approaches to getting them back in, but also looking at the men, looking at them taking paternity leave, looking at supporting them, allowing them to work flexibly if they're parents. So it is looking at gender, it is not just looking at women. Dubai has the same challenges you would have in London, but it has an additional sort of cultural complexity. At Simmons, the number of female partners has more than doubled in the last decade, from 11% to 25%. We move gender balance from being a diversity issue to more of a core business issue. We're a massively better business in so many different ways. Our financial performance is much stronger um, and has been over the last 10 years, gradually, as we've got more female partners um, into the firm. But we just have a uh, better quality decisions made, we see higher quality discussions taking place, our client relationships are a lot stronger. Since the 1990s, women have represented over 60% of new entrants into the profession, and there are more women than men practicing the solicitors, but more needs to be done to support women. The ambition is for at least 50% of Simmons' leadership roles to be filled by women in the future. Wouldn't that be fantastic? In fact, you could argue that with 65% of women entering the law, in fact, it ought to be 65%, but I, I'd take 50. We're a long way off the 50-50 balance that we need. We've made some good progress, but we've still got a very, very long way to go. We have more women than men entering the firm. So in many ways, we should be shooting for more than 50%, more than but there are still all sorts of barriers in place, um, and we're, we're absolutely not complacent about it. In the past, law firms have had a very masculine image. This is changing, not just in the policies that they introduce, but in the language that they use. The language in law has been um, very masculine in that um, I can remember a time when a corporate client wanted a heavy-hitting uh, criminal silk for a difficult matter. Uh, and immediately that brought to mind um, male barristers. And then I paused and thought about it and, and recognised that um, bias in the use of our language. And so for the client, I put forward uh, a variety of individuals, both men and women, and ultimately the client chose a female candidate. It became apparent that a woman can also be a heavy hitter, um, but sometimes I think the language gets in the way of what a client might really want. Change can't happen without involving everyone. Julian has Wednesday afternoons off. He's been doing this since 2005 when he decided he wanted to spend more time with his family. Now more men at senior level in the company are working part-time and taking paternity leave. I think it's still the case that women have the majority of childcare responsibilities, but the more men are embracing some of those responsibilities and being very honest about their own family commitments, I think that probably helps women as well. We very much decided to work with our other networks, throw events with them. Um, where there was obvious intersection, it was typically with our ethnic minority uh, network and our LGBTQ. And so typically now we will only do an event that touches on both of those issues. And the impact is enormous. I mean, you absolutely amplify the message, both internally and to clients. All of this helps people to be their true selves. As a very junior barrister, I felt like I had to look like the majority, which meant try as best I could to, to, to ignore my femininity. I wore glasses, I tied my hair back. Whereas I no longer feel like that, I feel like I'm in a working environment where I can dress how I like as long as it's uh, work appropriate and there aren't the same sort of judgments. For me, it's enabled me to be completely authentic. I don't have to lie anymore and say, I've got a meeting at five o'clock. I can just say, I'm going to go and pick my kids up and I'll be back online at eight o'clock. And nobody bats an eyelid. I can tell you now, 
that would not have been acceptable even five years ago. So it has really, really changed.